And so in the last years of her life, what I can just remember is my mom smiling beatifically, looking at the picture of Swami, closing her eyes, laying on the couch, just in total bliss. That's great, that's great. But I had no interest in him. I'd been there, I'd done that. I'd already had a guru and I'd moved on. After she passed away, I had no explanation, but for some reason, when I was getting ready to leave, I asked my dad if I could have all of Mom's Sai Baba books. Someone I had not been interested in him. I, it, I just don't know where that came from. But I picked out a book or two to take on the airplane with me. Whatever book it was, I don't think I got through more than four or five pages. I was in tears, and I knew Sai Baba was God. Welcome to a short but sweet Sai Baba story. It's the Sai experience of Trish Snedden. Welcome to Sojourns. This interview was recorded in the Pocono Mountains in Pennsylvania in May 2019. Trish, how long have you been in the Sai Baba fold? Well, I'm thinking it's about 18 years now as I was... That's a, that's a long time. Yeah. What yeah. brought you to Baba? My mom. <laughs> you were a California girl to time. Yes, yes. Up and in the Bay Area. In the Bay Area. And when I was my late teens, early 20s, I had been in contact with an organization that had a guru who was based in India. And I got involved in that, and it really opened me up. I felt extremely comfortable with all things Hindu and Sanskrit. And How do you explain that? I can't. I, I can't. It, but I, if one could say I must have experienced it in another lifetime, that's kind of how it feels. Mm -hmm. It's like something I'm already comfortable and familiar with. So that was that, but I didn't really follow up with it through my life. And, you know, decades went by. It still made a, had made an impression on me. Mm -hmm. But my, my parents were living in Walnut Creek at the time. And my dad had a company. And there was a gentleman working for him who his family were side devotees. Mm -hmm. And my mom was particularly interested in all things spiritual. And my parents went to Unity Church in the Bay Area. No Unity well. Yep. It's a great, great place to, mm -hmm. uh, to spend some time. And so my mom got some books from them and was talking to them. And Swami melted her heart. That simple. And she became totally devoted to Sai Baba. She had this beautiful picture of him sitting in the house on the, the shelf. My mother had lots of physical problems, lots. And so in the last years of her life, when I go to visit, what I can just remember is my mom smiling beatifically, looking at the picture of Swami, closing her eyes, laying on the couch, just in total bliss. That's great, that's great. But I had no interest in him. I'd been there, I'd done that. I'd already had a guru and I'd moved on. So while my mom was alive, talked a little bit about Sai Baba, but not much. After she passed away, a year later I was out visiting my dad. I have no explanation but for some reason, when I was getting ready to leave, I asked my dad if I could have all of Mom's Sai Baba books. Well, I wonder how that was lined up from the universe for you. I literally took a whole suitcase of Sai Baba books home. Someone I had not been interested in him. I, it, I just don't know where that came from. But I picked out a book or two to take on the airplane with me um, on the flight back to Pennsylvania and 
I, I'm not sure. I think it was a good old Sai Baba Man of Miracles, as I recall. I've read so many books since then. But whatever book it was, I don't think I got through more than four or five pages. I was in tears, and I knew Sai Baba was God. Isn't that amazing how that can happen that quickly? I mean, wow. it wasn't just a, a faint suggestion in your head, it was a knowledge. Yes, total knowledge. I knew, and I just said, thank you, Mom. My mom, Angel, <laughs> came well, and helped me along. She work early on, too. Well, I think she had. Yeah. She had a little near-death experience before she passed away. We didn't As had my grandmother. Mm, both of them. Yes, and my grandmother never talked about hers. After she passed away, there was a handwritten write-up of her near-death experience. So I feel like I have this heritage. <laughs> and have you ever been to see Sai Baba? Well, yes, we actually did have the good fortune to. Um, so I'm married and I have a son. And at the time, my son was 11. My husband thought it would be interesting to go to India. He didn't have quite the same feelings about Sai Baba that I did. But he allowed, he allowed the family to go. And we didn't really have the money, and I kept saying to Swami that, you know, if we're going to go to India, this money has to show up somewhere. And a very odd thing happened when we refinanced our house, and there was, like, this extra money. <laughs> and it was plenty. <laughs> and so I said, let's go. And I went online, and, and so I came up with a wonderful um, three-week trip to India, and it included visiting with some Sai people that I knew over there. It started at Puttaparthi, but we ended up in um, Goa, Gokarna. So we had some beach and golf time for my husband. So that was like the sweet, sweet spot there. Did you ever speak to Baba? So, when we went to Puttaparthi, it was at Christmas time, which of course is a really, really busy time. And I just, I, I knew I probably wouldn't get close to Sai Baba, but, you know, you hope at least you get to see him from afar. Mm -hmm. As we were driving in, the taxi driver said, oh, Swami's coming, get out of the car, get out of the car. And so we got out of the car. I mean, I wasn't ready for this at all. And here comes his car, and it's re going real slowly. I think it had to stop for something else going on. And he looked right at us. <laughs> and I felt like he had come out to greet us. He did. He did. <laughs> so that was the, my closest um, physical encounter. So is so there a way you could possibly tell us how Baba maybe changed some things in you? How has he transformed your life? Mm. So totally from the inside out. He I transformed your life? Yes. Someone who knows me, um, on the outside, maybe the changes are not as noticeable, but on the inside, total house cleaning. I feel at peace. While I'm not always in a state of constant integrated awareness, I am getting to the point where I'm that way a lot of the time. Would you trade that away for a thousand dollars, a million dollars? Oh, Ted. <laughs> I, it, it means money, and that means nothing. I have the universe. <laughs> I have answer. the universe. Nice response. <laughs> Sai Baba is the breath that I breathe, the air that I breathe. He is everything. Swami Sai Baba is source. He is being. He is everything and he's nothing. There's nothing that isn't Sai Baba. He is me. I am him. I am him. That breath says it all too. Sai Ram. Thank you. Sai Ram. Thank you, Trish. Thank you. <laughs>